graph the following complex number, then write them in rectangular form. I like this one because at least it's in radians. If we were to graph it, there's 12. But at, we can't really graph it yet. So the only way I could graph this is if I had, if I was going to graph it on polar paper. And I believe in the polar coordinate lecture that I've already put up online, I showed you how it looks with circles and you'd have 12 circles out. That's how we'd have to graph this. But first we need to turn it into rectangular so that I can graph it on the X, I, Y axis. How do we do that? Well, we know that Z is gonna equal, and this is really the same as 12 times the cosine of pi over six plus I sine of pi over six. Remember, if I have a triangle, and this is my angle, then the this is the x and this is the y. So the cosine is going to give me the x value. So th if this is pi over 6, the cosine is going to give me the x and the sine is going to give me the y. But we're in the complex plane. It doesn't really change a lot of how we're going to graph it. It just changes that it's, it's in the complex plane. We have 12. And the cosine of pi over 6 is the square root of 3 over 2. I would multiply this by the square root of 3 over 2 plus i. And the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So it would be i times 1 half, which would give me 6 times the square root of 3 plus 6i. OK, so the square root of 3 is like 1.7 times 6 is 1.7 times 6 is like over 10, a little over 10. I'm just approximating because obviously my graph is just an approximation as well. And this is six. So if I were to graph it, since everything's positive and we're in quadrant one, that would be the point right there. That's now in rectangular. We started with polar, we started in polar and we created we put it in rectangular. I think this is going to be a little bit interesting for you. I think this problem will help the most of any of it. So it says, of course, graph the complex number and compute the moduli and argument, which is the magnitude and the angle, magnitude and direction, or whatever you want to call it. They're calling it for, for this this particular book where I got this from, it's called the moduli and the arguments. So Z1, we have three plus three I. So two, three, two. That, here's Z1. And Z2 is gonna be zero plus two I, which means it's just going straight up. There's no X value. This is Z2. We graphed the complex number. It's asking me to put it into what we would consider polar. For Z1, I have, so the magnitude of Z1 would be the square root of 3 squared plus 3 squared. And I think I'll show you a little bit of algebra as we go, because you probably haven't seen all these different things that you can do without a calculator, which was, is, is kind of a nice thing to learn how to do. I have three squared plus three squared, which is the same as two times three squared. And that's the same as the square root of two times the square root of three squared, which is the same as the square root of two and the square root of three squared, these cancel and I just get three. So this is three times the square root of two. So that's the magnitude. And then if we want the angle, the angle is equal to the inverse tan of the opposite, which is this y part over the adjacent, which is the x part. So this is really the same as three over three, 
We've already gone over this. This is the inverse tangent of one. And the inverse tangent of one, as I said earlier, I think I, I think we did one with one, is 45 degrees. So now we know that Z1, we can write it as three times the square root of two times the cosine of 45 degrees plus I times the sine of 45 degrees. Or we can write it three square root of two angle 45. That's Z1. And then we're gonna do Z2. So it's zero squared plus two squared, which obviously equals two. And then our angle is, so there's nothing really to compute. If you wanna compute it, you're welcome to, but it's just going straight up. So we can tell that it's 90 degrees. There's no X part. That's why this one's a lot easier. And if you did the inverse tan of what you would get is two over zero, which is obviously undefined. And the tangent at 90 degrees or pi over two is undefined. It, it's exactly the same. Okay, so B says, compute the product of Z1, Z2. So we're just gonna do it manually first. So that's basically saying I want three plus three I times, I'm just gonna leave out the zero because it just makes it harder to ca calculate. And then I just distribute. So I would get six I plus six I squared. And hopefully you know that I squared is equal to negative one. This becomes uh, six I minus six, or in standard form, minus six plus six I. We're gonna find the magnitude and the angle. The magnitude of Z1, Z2 is gonna equal the square root of, again, we have negative six squared is really the same as six. It, since we're squaring it, we don't have to worry about the negative. And then we have again plus, six squared and we can do the same trick we just did before this is really the same as two times six squared because it's think of those as x's so it'd be x squared plus x squared is two x squared and then this would be equal to six times the square root of two and then we need our angle and our angle is equal to the inverse tangent of, look at that, six over six, which is one. We're still at 45 degrees, okay? This is the reference angle because really it is, it would be six over negative six. This would be negative, but I don't wanna use it negative. I'm gonna use it as a positive value if I were to graph this, I have to graph this in x is negative, here's negative six, y is positive, so this is positive six, there's my point. It is actually in quadrant two. What I'm gonna do, this is, since that's my reference angle, I'm gonna go all the way to here, that's 180 and that's going in the positive direction. And then I'm gonna back it up. So 180 minus 45. So my angle is equal to 180 minus 45 degrees, which is equal to 135 degrees. Here's the interesting thing. Um, unfortunately, I have things on two pages, so I'm gonna to have to scroll back and forth. But it says, discuss any connections you see between the factors and the resulting product. The final answer is six times the square root of two at an angle of 135, or we could say six times the square root of two times the cosine of 135 plus 
the I sine of 135. Our Z1 is three times the square root of two at an angle of 45 degrees. Z2 is equal to two at an angle of 90 degrees. So Z2 is equal to two at an angle of 90 degrees. And Z1 times Z2 is equal to six times the square root of two at an angle of 135 degrees. I don't know if you see any connections there between these three. So I'm just gonna let you think about it for a second before I tell you. Do you see any connections, Sam? Uh, the magnitudes are multiplied. Yes. And the angles are added. Exactly. So that is a, a great thing. When I multiply, as long as I'm in this polar form, I just multiply the magnitudes and add the angles. And that is the final slide. The conclusion that I wanted to give you from this presentation. If you multiply to two different complex numbers together, it's the same as multiplying their radiuses or their magnitudes and adding their angles. If you divide, then you're dividing the magnitudes and you're subtracting the angles. And that is the conclusion for today.